For decades, Steve Carter wondered who he really was and what happened to his biological parents. Steve Carter. Steve Carter. The man clicked on a website for missing children and found a picture of himself that sent him on a search to unlock the secrets of his past. It was a miracle that he found himself a whole 35 years after disappearing along with his mother. As excited and happy as he was about finding his family, he also felt brokenhearted because the story behind the disappearance of his biological mother, who is still listed as missing, is quite hard. To this day, no one knows what happened to his biological mother, Charlotte Moriarty. This is their story beginning with Steve's journey to finding himself, followed by the events that led to the permanent disappearance of his mother. At the age of three and a half, Steve Carter was living in an orphanage in Hawaii, where he has been since the age of six months. As an orphan, Steve was lucky because, unlike many orphans who end up moving from one foster home to another or experiencing problems, never finding a warm home and a good family to take care of them, he was adopted by a good, stable family that loved him very much from day one. Even though he was three and a half, he still remembers the day when the social workers introduced him to his new parents, Stephen and Pat Carter, from Oahu, Hawaii. His new mother, Pat, was a special education teacher, and Stephen was an army man at a nearby U.S. military base. They loved little Stephen from first sight. From that point on, his life was full of love, warmth, and stability. Nevertheless, as he grew older, he often wondered about his biological parents and why they left him. A whole 30 years later, he finally got a break in 2010 after realizing that there was something strange in the dates associated with the time he arrived at the orphanage and the date on his birth certificate. It did not make sense, so he changed his search strategy because he also suspected that there was something wrong with the narrative he was told about his mother. At this time, he had an excellent job at a successful biotechnology firm in Philadelphia, and he felt more compelled than ever to find the truth. Armed with a new birth date, it took him mere weeks to stumble upon the website missingkids.org, which is the largest and most influential American child protection organization. He spent hours looking at pictures of missing children and images of how they should look as they grew up. And boom, there it was. An image of a baby in his mother's lap next to a picture of how he should look as an older child and another as an adult. He knew that it was him. He felt that it was him. The child was called Marx Moriarty. So he called the missing kids organization and began the long journey of confirming that it was him. The DNA test took eight months and in October 2011, the final confirmation arrived. It was him, and his real name was Marx Moriarty. Finally, after 35 years, the orphan Steve Carter found his true identity, but sadly, he did not have closure, because his mother was still listed as missing. Marx knew that he had at least found his father and half-siblings. He finally knew who he was, but part of him was still missing because his mother was still listed as missing. Steve was happy, but now his search for his mother began. He soon discovered from police and investigators' files that in 1977, his 31-year-old biological mother, Charlotte Marcella Moriarty, was living with his biological father, Mark Barnes, a journalist and Vietnam veteran in Haula, Hawaii. The files showed that on June 21st, 1977, his father had just finished building a deck in front of the house and was planting some trees around it. As his father Mark worked in the garden, his mother Charlotte placed him in a stroller and told Mark that she was going to do some shopping in a nearby store, about three blocks away. It was the last time Mark has ever seen her. Charlotte was known as a free-spirited artist who had a history of taking off and disappearing for days at a time without even telling anyone where she was going. 
Mark did not like it, but there was very little he could do about it. As the hours passed, Mark began to worry and decided to head to the store to look for her. He was unable to find her and to his dismay, the store clerk told him that she did not come to the store on that day. However, he did find the stroller nearby, but Mark's was in it. Mark felt worried and confused. However, he was also used to Charlotte doing such things, so he assumed the best and guessed that as usual, she would simply soon return. Nevertheless, that was the first time she took off without notice with the baby, so Mark felt uneasy and somewhat worried. 24 hours later, Mark decided to call the police and informed them of the situation, but unfortunately, they did not make much of it after he told him that she had a habit of taking off for days without notice. All the police did was ask him to call back if she did not show up soon. The next day, Mark decided to go look for her and once again called the police to update them on the situation. This time, they took down the details and vowed to look into it. For two and a half weeks, Mark searched for his wife and child and also did not hear back from the authorities. So on July 10th, he walked into the police station and demanded an update. Sadly, he could not even find who he spoke to the first two times, and the police denied ever talking to him. Anyway, it was only then that he was able to file a missing person report and forced the police to take the case seriously. The police were unable to find any leads, so they went after Mark, citing the recent changes he made in the grounds around his house when he built the deck and planted new trees. However, they found nothing, and soon the case went cold. Mark's life was turned upside down as he spent the next one and a half years searching every corner of Hawaii. He literally drove all over the island looking for her and distributing flyers with photos of her and little Mark's. These horrific details in the files left Mark's feeling great unease. Why did his father wait so long to go to the police station? But more importantly, why didn't the authorities connect the dots? Because in reality, Charlotte was not missing in the first few days after she took off. She was actually at a mental institute, lost and waiting for someone to claim her and little Marks. If it was not for the name change she made when she was brought to the mental institute, Mark, Charlotte, and Marks would have never been separated. What happened is that Charlotte was suffering from an undiagnosed mental illness. Mark did take her to psychologists for treatment, but they never gave her the right diagnosis and thus were unable to treat her. This mental illness was the reason why, on the day she went shopping, she instead ended up in a woman's home on the other side of town. The woman who found her called the police, and when they arrived, they found that Charlotte needed medical attention. So, she was taken to a mental care facility while Marks was taken into protective custody. It was then that she gave them the false names Jane Amy and Tenzin Amy for her and her son Marks. This is why the authorities did not connect the dots. Back then, things were messy and the police did not exactly have sophisticated computers and systems like we have today. The healthcare system was not all that great either because Charlotte was able to leave the facility on her own will, and the staff never bothered to tell her that she forgot about her little boy, Marks. Interestingly, Steve also found while sifting through the files that his mother was married in 1967, years before she met his father, and had a daughter called Jennifer. Amazingly, it was his older half-sister Jennifer who never gave up on finding her mother, and she was also the reason his case was listed on missingkids.org in 2001 because she was looking for him too. The saddest part of this story is that no one to this day knows what happened to Charlotte after she left the mental care facility. Thank you for watching, and please do subscribe, like, to comment, share, and ring the bell to get notified every time we upload a new video.